Coming up today on the Cowboys Report, what exactly is Jason Garrett's future, and is he truly in a Super Bowl or bust situation in 2019? Let's talk Dak Prescott. Is he not going to take a discount? Well, we've mentioned this before, but his comments really drive the point home. And finally, is Dak a top 15 quarterback or not? The answer might surprise you. All coming up on today's Cowboys Report. Hello friends, welcome into the Cowboys Report presented by BetDSI. I am your host Tom Dino. Let's start things off with a news item, the signing of Reggie Davis, the wide receiver who did spend some time on the Cowboys practice squad earlier this year, or earlier last year I should say. Signed to a futures deal, speedy receiver, returnability has bounced around the NFL. I wouldn't bake bank on him being anything more than a depth piece for the Cowboys. Here's how their wide receiver depth chart currently shakes up. Amari Cooper, Gallup, of course those two guys aren't going anywhere anytime soon. Beasley, Austin Hearns, and Terrence Williams, their futures are very much in doubt right now. I figure multiple of those guys will not be back on the roster next year. Noah Brown, Lance Lenore, Cedric Wilson, Devin Smith all competing for a roster spot. I kind of think Davis is more of just a backup camp body type player. I'd be surprised if he made a big impact for the Cowboys next year, but I'll never say never. Now, who is your all-time favorite Cowboys player? Let us know in the comment section and go DM me on Twitter at WhatGoingDowny if you guys want to hear my answer. I suspect we'll have several of the triplets on there. Get now to the Cowboys rumors, and as promised on my Twitter is Bob Stoops going to Dallas. Four stars on this one. It's a done deal but not to the Cowboys. Instead, Bob Stoops heading to the XFL. He will be the head coach and GM of the Dallas XFL team with no nickname yet determined for that franchise. The XFL starts play in 2020 with a 10-week season, and Stoops in particular liked the idea of having a less time-consuming role, not quite as heavily involved, doesn't have to recruit like it is in college, and it's not really going to be a 365-day job like a college or NFL gig is. And yet, despite that, I fully expect that you'll still see plenty of Bob Stoops to a college program or to the NFL, pro NFL team, Cowboys or whomever, rumors as the season goes on next year. Now, if it's your first time watching the show, first off, thanks for watching. Go subscribe, youtube.com slash Dallas Cowboys Report. Here's what the stars you see mean. It's all, I think, fairly self-explanatory, but we'll break it down if it's your first time. Zero stars, it's the number of fights Odell Beckham won against Net. It's fake news. Don't buy it. One star, there is a small shred of truth there. It's not quite accurate, but there are some semblances of accuracy in there. Two stars, people are talking. You know, it's, it's firmly in that rumor category. Three stars means it's pretty likely not quite set in stone, but it's tracking that way towards c coming true. And four stars, Zeke Seaton, it's a fact. This is a done deal. You need to believe this one. We'll stick with our coaching theme here early on. And in 2019, is it Super Bowl or bust for Jason Garrett? I'll give this one two stars. People are talking, in this case, the Dallas Morning News. And there's no doubt that Garrett is coaching for his job in 2019. And the expectations are once again, to make a Super Bowl run. Now, my question is, in, is the NFC title game enough? And I kind of think it would be as long as the Cowboys don't get blown out. And also, what if there are injuries? What if Dak gets hurt? What if Zeke goes down? What if all kinds of injuries strike this team and the Cowboys are doomed from the start? Those are two reasonable outcomes that I think make it, a, instead of being a four or three star rumor, it ends up being a two star one instead. But there is no doubt that Garrett is coaching for his job next season. And if Garrett does not have at least the same success he had last year in all likelihood more success in a contract year, I don't think you see Garrett return as the Cowboys head coach. Now in terms of winning the Super Bowl, here are the bet DSI odds, plus 2,150. You put down 10 bucks and you win, you win 215 total. Favorable odds if you want to bet on the Cowboys, not that favorable in terms of of the Cowboys themselves. Those are some pretty long odds for Dallas to finally break its far too long Super Bowl drought. If you want to bet on these odds, chatsports.com slash bet takes you right to them. When you sign up and deposit, use promo code COWBOYS120 for a 120% deposit bonus. You put down 50 bucks and bet you will give you 60 for free. Put down 100, it becomes 120. And if you guys use Bitcoin, that bonus gets even bigger, 150% instead of the 120 there. And if you need help with Bitcoin, 
We'll take care of you. DM us on Twitter. We'll walk you through it. We'll help you get that extra, extra money on BetDSI. Get that 150% deposit bonus at chatsports.com slash bet. Let's talk quarterbacks now. And Dak Prescott, is he not going to take a discount? This one's three stars. And you can argue over the actual value of what discount means or what the, the term means or what a discount would actually be. But in particular, if you expect him to take a Tom Brady far under market deal, it's just not going to happen. Says he wants to be paid what he deserves. And as for Tom Brady itself, quote, nobody's wife makes as much money as his wife does either. When Tom Brady isn't the breadwinner in the home, then that's a great problem to have. And Dak's not wrong here. Dak's actually very spot on. Giselle is worth more than Tom Brady is. And oh, by the way, Brady hasn't always taken a discount either. That's a more recent development. Back in 2010, when Brady signed his an extension, he became the highest paid quarterback in the NFL at a, about 15% of the cap, which much in line with what quarterbacks these days are asking, although it's grown even more since then. Now, the sticker shock on a Dak Prescott extension will be real. It is going to be bigger than the national media expects, I think, and I think it's going to be bigger than even some Cowboys fans expect. Again, a rising cap means a rising per year value. Derek Carr signed a $25 million extension a couple of years ago. If he signed that today, it'd be closer to 30 with the way the cap has risen. That's a big difference. So when Dak signs a big, fat, contract extension, it's not going to be an overpay based on the actual market. Now, the market is messed up. I'm not going to argue that. Quarterbacks in general cost so, so much. I think it's in a market inequality that could be factored out at some point. But if Dak Prescott hits the open market, if he were to, he would get a lot of money. His numbers back that up. He's played very well for the Dallas Cowboys. Now, he's not perfect. No third-year quarterback, he is not even Mahomes or Baker Mayfield, are perfect yet. No quarterback ever will be. But I think at times we expect Dak to complete 100% of his passes, when in reality, 75% is, more, is closer to 100 because no one gets that high. So Dak is going to get a big contract because that's what the market dictates. And I am happy to make the argument alongside you that the market is off. The market doesn't make sense anymore. But that's what Dak would make in the open market. So how much would Dak Prescott, how much would you pay Dak Prescott per year? Excuse me. Let me know in the comment section. And oh, by the way, subscribe to us on YouTube, youtube.com slash Dallas Cowboys. Hit that button if you're watching on YouTube. Turn on notifications. We will have a Dak Prescott contract extension video coming out later this week with an in-depth breakdown. And yes, the money is going to be a lot more than I think many are expecting. As for Dak on the field play, is he a top 15 quarterback? We can argue on this one a little bit here as well. I'm going to give it three stars, though. I do think Dak Prescott is a top 15 quarterback in the NFL. Now, you can hate on Dak if you want, but Prescott's good. He is an above-the-average quarterback, which puts him in that 14 to 18 range because the drop-off when you get to like 23, 24 to the rest of the NFL is so incredibly steep, it's ridiculous. The difference between having Dak Prescott and Case Keenum, Ryan Tannehill, is huge. It is an absolutely massive drop-off. Now, Dallas Morning News put him at 14. They didn't have Cam Newton on which I found kind of interesting. I put him at 15, right in that range. I think we can, in general, agree on some of the top 10. Brady, Breeze, Rodgers, Mahomes, Wilson, Luck, Big Ben, Matt Ryan, Phillip Rivers. Those, to me, are the top 10 quarterbacks. And then it gets a little bit dicier in the, with the quarterbacks in the mix for the top 15. I think Deshaun might fit more in that range. Baker Mayfield, Cam Newton, Matt Stafford, Carson Wentz, Jared Goff. You can also throw in Mitchell Trubisky. Those quarterbacks are all in the mix for top 15. That's 16, 17 in total. I take out Trubisky. I take out Jared Goff. I'm also open to discussions on other quarterbacks in that range. Maybe not Cam Newton if he's fully healthy, but if Wentz isn't healthy, how can you put him in there? So all of a sudden, boom, you're in the top 15. I will not hear arguments, by the way, for quarterbacks like Andy Dalton. Winston, Mariota, those quarterbacks are not better. Derek Carr, for example, those quarterbacks are not better than Dak Prescott. So in the end, I think at minimum, he's a top 20 quarterback. I put him more in the top 15, although I think I'm higher on Dak Prescott than at least some of you are out there. He is above average in accuracy across the board. The numbers back that up, despite the ugly misses that do happen. So where would you rank Dak among NFL quarterbacks? Let me know in the comments section. I just said I think he's in there at, top, at number 15. But let me know what you guys think. I'm sure we can all agree nicely, and we definitely won't turn this into a YouTube comment war. 
I kind of guess what's going to end up happening. But anyway, we'll stick with the quarterback here. Could the Cowboys add a veteran? And don't get your hopes up here, folks. I'm giving it just the one star. I agree with the Dallas Morning News here. It just doesn't seem all that likely. It's not the Cowboys' MO right now. Their MO is to go cheap at quarterback. They're spending less at quarterback than any team in the NFL by a ridiculously large margin. Like, Mike White is almost making as much as Dak Prescott right now because of the way the NFL works out. Dak's making li little. Cooper Rush is an undrafted free agent. Mike White was a fifth-round pick. They don't have any money invested at the quarterback spot. They're going cheap and hoping Dak stays healthy. And plus, he did add another former quarterback to the staff, hoping that can help develop Dak Prescott as well. So in all likelihood, this is your 2019 quarterback depth chart for the Dallas Cowboys. Dak Prescott, Cooper Rush, and Mike White. And Prescott, again, he got better as the year went on. He absolutely did, especially once Cooper came to town. And go figure, you give Dak a good receiver, and the offense gets better. Crazy, right? And Mike White, meanwhile, was an active each. Maybe he can take over for Rush as the backup at some point in the near future. So should the Cowboys add a veteran quarterback? Let me know in the comments section. I'd like to see it happen. I'm typing in Y for yes, but I also don't think it's the most likely outcome for the Cowboys. One last rumor here. Should the Cowboys not trade up into the first round? Four stars, unfortunately, on this one. Now, there are some exceptions, like, I don't know, if TJ Hawkinson, a top 10 talent, falls to 32, I'd consider it. You know, if, if Quinn Williams or something crazy falls to the end of round one, I'd consider it, although at that point, there's probably an off-the-field concern there. But the Cowboys lack a first-round pick, thanks to the Amari Cooper trade. And moving up from number 58 to number 32 is wildly expensive. At that point, it just makes more sense to sit out the first round. You have to give up your second round pick this year, your second round pick next year, and a fourth round pick this season. That is just too much to get under the end of the first round. So again, here's the basically the trade details here if it were to happen with a heavy emphasis based on what the Eagles Ravens did last year. A very similar deal, of course, the Ravens went up to get Lamar Jackson. Two seconds and a fourth. That's a little bit too much for me. At some point, you need cheap young players that you can draft well, and the Cowboys draft pretty well. It's just too expensive. As much as I would like the Cowboys to get an impact player, I don't think it makes sense for Dallas to move up into the end of the first round and sacrifice really a big portion of your draft this year and chunks of your draft next season. Hey Cowboys fans, thanks for watching the Cowboys Report. If you haven't already, click right here to subscribe to our channel for all the best Cowboys coverage on the internet. That's news, rumors, highlights, mailbags, film studies, and a whole lot more. And I'm making your lives a little bit easier as well with the next Cowboys Report video right here.